Hello everyone, this is Abhinash and welcome to Mortal Universe. In this lecture, we'll see about the gas-filled X-ray tube or gas discharge X-ray tube. After 1900s, X-rays were started to use in medical field to take radiographs. So to increase the efficiency and the intensity of these X-rays, gas-filled X-ray tube was invented. And now we'll see the constructions of this X-ray tube. First of all, we'll start from cathode. And here the cathode is made up of aluminum. The reason for using aluminum is aluminum has a tendency of less sputtering. Sputtering occurs when these cathode rays that is called electrons goes and ionize the air molecules. It produces vapor inside the tube. So these vapors may go and deposit on the cathode and the glass walls of this X-ray tube. And due to this deposition, it absorbs the air inside the tube and increases the tube resistance. So to reduce this sputtering, we are using this aluminum because aluminum has a tendency of less sputtering. And here the cathode is made like cup shape. So the reason for cup shape is to focus all the electrons to the target. For example, if the cathode is flat, what happens is these electrons are going to be diverged. Because of the divergence, some amount of electrons are only interacted with the anode and produce X-rays. So the intensity of the X-rays are also reduced. So to use all those electrons and produce a more intensity X-rays, we are focusing the electrons to the target. Okay, this is the reason for the concavity of this cathode. And this gas-filled X-ray tube is also called as Jackson X-ray tube because Herbert Jackson is a physicist who first introduced the cup-shaped cathode inside the tube. And now we'll see about the anode. And here there is two electrodes that is anode and the anti-cathode. And anti-cathode uh, serves as a target for these high velocity electrons. And this anti-cathode target is made up of tungsten or platinum or molybdenum, anything. Okay? And the reason for using this heavy metal because uh, it has a high atomic number so that it can produce efficient X-rays and due to various melting points, high melting points, it can withstand the heat inside the tube when this high velocity electrons interact with the target. Okay, this is the reason for using this heavy metals. And these two electrodes, that is anode and anticathode, supplied by the positive charge. Here, the anticathode is placed opposite to the cathode, and the anode is placed above the anticathode. And scientists who invented this tube uh, believed that by keeping two electrodes, the tube performance is going to be increased. And after 1920s, most of the scientists were found that there was no use of using these two electrodes inside the tube. But even by using one electrode, the performance is same. And after 1920s, they used only one electrode and called it as anode. And on the top of the X-ray tube, we have a regulator. The, the use of regulator is to maintain the air pressure inside the tube. When ionization occurs inside the tube, uh, some amount of air is reduced inside the tube. So to maintain this air pressure, we are using this regulator. This regulator injects air or gas inside the tube to maintain the pressure. And at last, this gas-filled X-ray tube works under the cold principle. And if you don't know the cold principle yet, I have done a detailed video about this cold principle at the atomic level. So you can go and check it out in my description box. I have given a link below there. Okay. And I'll explain simply about this core principle now. So here, when you give electric current to the cathode, cathode accelerates most small amount of electrons. And these electrons go and ionize the air and produce positive charge ions. And these positive charge ions again attract towards the cathode and cathode attracts the positive charge ions and repels enormous amount of high velocity electrons. And this high velocity electrons goes and interacts with the anode or target and X-rays are produced. And this is simply about this cold process principle. Okay. And that's it about this gas filled X-ray tube. I think this video is useful for you. And if you have any doubts or 
feedbacks on this lecture, you can feel free to put comments on my comment box. I'll try to make it on my upcoming lectures. And if you want to get my upcoming videos, you can subscribe my channel. And thank you.